the west coast of Canada, Vancouver Whitecaps player Stephen Betashore joins us. Stephen, welcome to Red Card, my friend. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to have you on, Stephen. Big game coming up on the weekend, and it is against the champs, Sporting Kansas City. Your fans, I'm pretty sure, getting pumped and excited, and I'm sure Carl Robinson has yourself and all the team focused at the big task at hand. As you know, Stephen, this Sporting Kansas City team, with a man down a number of times this season, have come away with result. How are you guys preparing for the champs? Yeah, like you said, you know, it's a big game. They are the champs, and, you know, I think we have to be ready to go. Uh, I think so far this season we've done well against the, the bigger and better teams, which is a good sign for us. But uh, it's, it's important, you know, we're at home. Anytime we play at home, we try to put on a good performance for our fans, and we always try to get three points. So I know the past few games we've come out with ties, even though we've played well. So I think Sunday we really need to do all the little things and try to get the three points. Steven, there's a great mix with your side, this Vancouver Whitecaps side. You've got a lot of young, hungry, uh, fresh minds that want to learn and want to succeed. You think of Marco Carducci, the 17-year-old, not too long ago starting in his game. You think of Gershon Coffey. You think of all sorts of guys, Maddox, on and on and on and on. And then you got the veterans, the guys that knows what it takes to win, and guys like yourself and Andy O'Brien, and David Usted, these guys bring a lot to the table. How important is that, that you have a good mix of veterans and youth? Yeah, I definitely think we have a good mix. Uh, you know, our young guys are the, the quick, athletic, technical players, and, you know, the veterans, like you said, we, we know what it takes to win. Um, so if we can just kind of bring them in under our wings a little bit and kind of tell them the, the little things and get them to, to come on our side a little bit in that sense, um, I think we have a great partnership uh, going, and so far it's, it's been good. You know, we we're tied for the least amount of losses with four. Um, unfortunately, like I said earlier, those ties we need to convert into wins, and I think we'll be we'll be looking real good uh, come the end of the season. Stephen, I've watched your career quite a bit, especially with the San Jose Earthquakes. A good friend of mine is the assistant coach there, Nick Dasovich, and uh, he raves about you. And uh, I'll never forget watching you. And the style you bring to the table, Stephen, is a, is a real hard-nosed style, but a thinking man's game. Is this what you're trying to uh, display and, and, and help some of the youngsters alongside you so that you could help them and groom them as well? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, Andy O'Brien and I were talking about that actually today, that you know we have such athletic and gifted players, and if we can just kind of give them that kind of the, the brain part of it, you know, you don't have to necessarily work so hard if you just work smarter. And it's something as simple as, you know, uh, a winger tucking in a little bit to the left, and he'll save himself uh, a lot of running. But if he's not tucked in, he'll have to chase someone down. So simple stuff like that, um, I think, where we continue to talk to the guys in front of us, and they talk to the people next to them, and, and hopefully they just learn from it and get to the next level. Stephen, this year MLS has been a, a league that, for my money, has been all sorts of teams that are on parity with one another. I mean, not one team for me has taken off. You see a lot of teams close in both uh, uh, divisions, and, and there's a lot of important games coming up. What do you attribute that to? Do you attribute it to uh, a lot of teams making a smart strategic moves in the offseason and, and addressing what they need? Because you look at D.C. United. They basically revamped their whole squad, and they are sitting in a real good position right now. Yeah, yeah, that's the great thing about this league. You know, it's definitely one of the most competitive leagues in the world. And, you know, when you say that, people give you a confused look. It's because look at the, the teams that have won it. Look at the teams that are always competing. It's, you know, anybody can take it. It doesn't matter if you were last place last year, like DC United. Look what you're doing this year. You're in first place or close to it. Um, so every year, each team in the MLS is competitive, and that's the great thing. You can't go into any game and be like, oh, it's a guaranteed three points, because on any given night, uh, you can have even the team sitting in last you know, the team sitting in first place. So that's, that's the great thing about this league. You always have to uh, give everything you've got. You can't take anything for granted, and, um, you know, we enjoy that. You know, every game counts so much. You know, Stephen, it's great that you bring up that point because ever since Marco DeVaio made his uh, uh, his debut for the Montreal Impact coming over from Italy, David Beckham, now we see Defoe and Bradley here in Toronto, Dempsey, on and on and on. I've been getting bombarded uh, from my colleagues overseas, especially in Italy, asking me so many questions about MLS attendances, players, salaries, on and on and on. And finally, 
uh, they're starting to give respect to this league, especially the way the USA displayed itself in this World Cup. Is it great to see as a player like yourself, who's been in this league for a number of years, to get that respect, not only in North America where you've had it, but, but in Germany, in Italy, in Spain? Yeah, you know, it really is great to see that, that appreciation from, from the whole world, not just, you know, people in the U.S. are close to us. Um, you know, you talk to people from, you know, Germany. I have Italian friends, you know, I have European friends. And, and a lot of people, you know, even at the World Cup, a lot of people are talking about, oh, I want to come to, to MLS. The competition is great, you know. A lot of people are trying to come over here because, I mean, the U.S., it's a beautiful place. Uh, people like visiting here. Why not, you know, have a living here and stay here? Um, and work here, so it's definitely great. The, the competition, the the type of players that are coming over, uh, the competitiveness. It's definitely it's going the right direction, and it's it's great to be a part of it. To be honest, Stephen, some of the agents that have called me in the last number of years from Italy specifically have have asked me many questions, but I've warned them, and I think you could tell our viewers and listeners out there that it isn't a vacation for the player that comes over from Europe or South America when they come here to MLS. That was, uh, you know, a lot of the misguided information that was sent overseas into South America, that it's a vacation. I'll never forget speaking to Jimmy Nielsen, former goalie of Sporting Kansas City, on our show last year after he won it all. And he had to tell me about stories he had with some of his former teammates back home and warning them that this isn't a vacation, that these guys here play for keeps and they play hard. Yeah, I definitely think that's a, a misconception, unfortunately, still. But I think once they get here, they realize real quickly that it's not somewhere just to come kick back and relax in a vacation. Uh, you know, the guys that have come here overseas, uh, they, they've come here and they've worked hard. You know, you look at someone, you know, like, like Beckham and like Robbie Keane, who, you know, are big names. They've succeeded overseas, and they come over here, and they work just as well. You look at that Keen, and he's, you know, chasing chasing players down. He's not just walking around, um, you know, and that's just two guys out of many, many players that have come here and, and worked real hard. And, and for the guys that haven't worked hard, and there have been a few, you look, they're not in the league anymore because, you know, we're, we're here. We're trying to, you know, compete with everybody, every team, and, and it definitely shows with, with um, what we've got here right now. It's great to see. Steven, sitting here in Toronto, uh, you know, in the conference and in the division, I've gotten to see a number of games in person and on TV uh, from many of the different cities, whether it's Columbus, New York, Chicago, you name it. But to me, that Western Conference is lights out, physical, game in and game out each weekend. And the fan attendance, and especially in that Pacific Northwest, and even with your former team, San Jose, the way they attend games, the way they support their team. Like, I look at San Jose, and to me, that is the Green Bay Packers of the NFL. Such a, a community-based team. They rally around it. And then you see where you're at now, Stephen, in Vancouver. You take the Timbers, the Sounders, and the Whitecaps. That can, to me, rival any European three nations in Europe in regards to attendance and also the, the, the attention that they get. Am I off base on that? No, you're definitely right on that point. You know, it's it's great to see the attendance, you know, especially in the Pacific Northwest, like you mentioned, you know, the Seattle, the Portland. You just look at the All-Star game the other day and how great of an atmosphere that was. Um, so it's it's great to see, you know, um, even even other cities like Kansas City. I mean, that's look at, look at what they've done there ever since they've got the new stadium and the support that they've gotten. So it's really great to see, and you're you're 100% right on that fact. Stephen, I can't let you go without asking you about the World Cup experience. Here in the city of Toronto, there is a huge Iranian community, beautiful people, hardworking people. They give so much to the city that I was born in and love, and they love their national team, and they love watching the sport that we love, uh, soccer, footy. Talk to us about an experience you'll never forget. Yeah, to say they love their national team is an understatement. I mean, they are just... Uh, so passionate they ev it means everything to them and and I, I got that sense of it the first time I went to Iran and you know you can talk to a little kid or you know a very older grandma and you know they know everything about the national team and it was it was so great to see because that's the type of passion I have because it's, it's my living and I love it so much but to see other people who m might not play it but they love it that much it was really a great feeling, and you know, my time in Brazil, although it was, it was short, we got 
we didn't get to the next round. It was it was great. It was memorable. Um, the the one thing I always I always come to first talking about is the fans and how passionate they were. Not just our fans, but all the fans that were there from the uh, the other countries. It was great to see their support and and you know I always talk about you know each club has a certain passion, but when you're talking about their country. I mean, it's it's at another level, and it was great to be a part of that. It and, really was. And, you know, the game of soccer, Stephen, as you and I both love, and you play as a professional, I don't know how you feel about this, but brings peace to many, many regions of the world, many countries. Everyone stops. It's peaceful. It's enjoyable. People smile. People cry after losses. But it's a peaceful sport. It's a sport that people uh, just really embrace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely brings, you know, people together. Uh, a couple of my friends went to to support me and watch some of the games, which was great of them. And they were talking about how wonderful the other country fans were too towards them. You know, it, it, it just they just bring this this uh, I guess if you want to say love together, and it, it's just it's just for the game. So it's great to see. Stephen, in the back of your mind, I'm pretty sure you you, you had a lot of thoughts going through your mind uh, playing in that World Cup. Was there? a youth coach that meant so much to you growing up that helped get to where you're at, living a dream that many uh, will never be able to live. Is, is there a parent? Is there a, a sibling that has helped you when you were down maybe and, and you were a little bit lacking of confidence to pick you up? Who are they? Oh, man, there's so many people that I'm thankful for. I, I didn't even know where to begin. You know, the, the list goes on and on. So many people have helped me. Um, you know, obviously my parents mean so much to me. Um, so so much support, so much belief. Uh, I had one club coach my entire youth career, Ken Bratcher. He was he was so supportive. He's actually going through a tough time right now. He has MS, so oh. I wish him I wish him the best. Uh, such a great guy, and um, he really took care of us growing up with our club team. Each one, not just his kid. His kid was on the team, but he treated all of us like he were his kids. So he definitely helped. And you know, I've had so many people that you know, soccer moms on the team that, you know, would even drive me to practice on numerous occasions because my, my parents had to work or whatever it was. So, I mean, I, I, I can't just, you know, stop there. Even my wife's, uh, my, well, my wife's mom sent me so many care, care packages in San Diego when I was going to school there. It was my first time away from home. Um, yeah, there's just so many people that uh, it's the list is honestly it goes on and on. I'm just so thankful for everyone in my life. And, and isn't it all worth it today, Stephen? That all those long uh, car rides, all those times that you were going to training, and, and your parents were there, and all those people were there. That now you can put a smile on their face in playing in the World Cup as you did and playing professionally. I think that's outstanding. Yeah, honestly, that that's the the biggest thing for me. You know, um, knowing that. They helped me, and then I got to where they thought I would get. And one of the tough things actually was in the World Cup is was not playing, and I felt like I let them down. It wasn't that about me. It was never about me. I always felt like I let them down by not playing. So I told them that I'm going to work so hard to hopefully play in the next World Cup. And, you know, I, I really just dedicate all my hard work to all the people that have helped me in my life. Well said. Stephen, what kind of advice would you love to give there? Uh, today to the youth uh, coaches out there that unfortunately some of them uh, really want to do what's right for the team and, and for the youngsters development but unfortunately you know in North America Stephen there's too many of them that want to win that two dollar trophy that two dollar medal uh, they look at the standings uh, game in and game out and all they care about is the wins so that they don't lose players what do you want to say to those youth coaches out there yeah, you know, it's it's definitely tricky. Like you said, there's so many, you know, players trying to get to the next level, and I think that's, that's every kid's dream is playing professional. At least it was mine, and I know my close friends, same thing, and it's it's tough to make it, and, and the coaches, it's, it's a different standpoint. Like you said, they're trying to win. Um, but I, I think if you just, you know, you stay true to the players and you talk to them, and one of the greatest things when I've grown up is seeing players' coaches. I mean, you all kids... Uh, you know, if you're a kid, you're growing up, you're an adult, you love when you have a player's coach, you know, someone that you can go talk to. So I think that's the main thing for some of these coaches. If they can, if they're approachable and they can just talk to these kids and the kids feel comfortable to come and talk to them, if they have a question, hey, coach, am I doing this right? Or, hey, coach, uh, what do I need to improve on? I think that's really the main thing. And what do you want to say to the kids out there that some of them maybe they're, they're lacking in that confidence because they're always on the bench and, and they want to prove to the coach that they belong out there. They want to prove to the coach that they can do what's 
asked of them. They want to be given the opportunity. They have that dream, but unfortunately, they're not getting that opportunity right now. What do you want to say to them? Yeah, I mean, I was in the same boat. You know, I was not always a starter. I was on the bench. You know, even my freshman year in college, I redshirted. I didn't play one a single game. Um, and it's it's really your your attitude towards that and towards life and and you know you you appreciate where you are but you always want to get better. That was the that was the thing. You know, I wasn't sitting on the bench pouting. I was looking up and I was studying the game. I was you know working harder. I was staying later. I was in the gym. And I was always just trying to get better. And once you get your chance, you have to prove it. So that's that's the thing. If you kind of sit there and soak, you're you're not going to get better from it. You know, you have to always just try to try to work hard. It's a lot of sacrifice, a lot of dedication. And when you get your shot, you just you're just so thrilled, and you just want to make the most of it. That's all. Stephen, just before we let you go, I really appreciate the time you've given out of your busy schedule. I want to ask you this: you, you, You've played in the U.S. of A. You're playing in Canada now. I'm sure that you've seen a lot of youngsters from both countries. Obviously, here in Canada, uh, we have suffered for many, many years to get back to the World Cup. But the USA has continuously gotten to World Cups and gotten better and better. And, I, and I've gone on record as saying this. And I said it when the draw took place, they'd get out of their group. And I still believe that within the next two World Cups, the USA will get to a Final Four. But here in Canada, we're lacking that. What do you see maybe in the limited time you've had to watch youngsters from the U.S. and Canada that there is the gap that's really leaving in between both countries? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know really too much about the youth system in Canada, um, but I know a lot of people talking to the people here, and they're saying that it's improved and they're excited uh, about being in the MLS and what that will mean to the national team. You know, players will stick around and, um, and, and play for the Canadian national team. And they, they all talked about the, the youth Canadian teams were – real good but then for some reason when it comes to the full team um you know they just can't make that extra leap so i don't know exactly what the the little problems are but hopefully they solve it because the people here are so passionate about their sport and you know they're they're so supportive which is great so hopefully you know they can get to to the standard where the u.s like they're making it every year and and have that because they 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 truly deserve it and as far as the u.s um, I, I definitely think you're right. I think within the next two World Cups, they're going to be in the final four. I, I think, you know, within the f- next three, maybe four, they should be winning it. With the, the caliber type of players they have and, you know, the, the, the youth system now is all working together. It's kind of like the European where you have these academies. Um, I definitely think they're on the right path. I mean, you just look some of these top athletes in other sports like Major League Baseball or um, you know, National Basketball Association or NFL. You look at those athletes and imagine if some of those kids are sticking around to play soccer instead. Can you imagine if LeBron James or Russell Westbrook are playing soccer? I mean, <laughs> that's how are you going to compete with them? That's like what we're dealing with with the Germans, how athletic and tall and fast and quick they are and technical. So imagine the best athletes sticking around and playing soccer. It's going to be a scary sight for other countries. Absolutely. Stephen Betashar, listen, we thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here. Good luck against the champs on the weekend. And again, continued success. And hopefully we'll see you in the playoffs with the Whitecaps because their fans, as you said, are some of the best in MLS. Stephen, thanks again, my friend, for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. One of the best defenders in MLS. You heard him right there. Stephen Betashar.